What's up, everybody? This is Joe, a.k.a. The Dentist, and I'm bringing you episode three of The Spawn Shop. For those of you that are new to this series, The Spawn Shop is going to focus on competitive gaming, 4v4 spawns, as well as provide tips, tricks, and strategies for navigating the map, setting up for CTF, and domination. We may get to search and destroy later on down the line, but we're going to focus on CTF and domination right off the bat. So, for those of you that have missed episode 1 of this series, it is the first half of this CTF game from the A spawn. If you click the annotation now for episode 1, you can go back and watch that, and continue on with this episode after that. You can also check out episode 2, which is Summit Domination, done by my partner, Lloyd Milligan. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is general callouts for Havana. These are the callouts that my team uses, and they are not necessarily set in stone. You guys should uh, take your teams around each map, Come up with your own callouts uh, and just, you know, use whatever you feel comfortable with that everybody can recognize. Like this spawn point, for example, called Pots. A lot of people call that Hedge, they call it Flower Bed, call it something completely different, but our team knows it as Pots and everybody knows what we're talking about when we say that. So that's the most important thing. As long as you know what your, your team's talking about, the callouts don't mean anything. So, as you can see, we're going to start out here on the C spawn side, and I am going to run and throw a popular prenade towards the fountain area. This is going to catch anyone that's coming through fountain right off the bat, and fortunately I didn't. The guy uh, made a smart play and waited for me to come through, but I was luckily lucky to pick him up as I got a nice drop shot on him. But um, as you can see, I'm going to sit here right away on the fountain, and I'm going to hold this area down. This is one of the most important spots on this map for either side, and I like to sit here for a little bit, wait for my team to get set up, and pick up anybody that's coming through this lobby area right here. A little late pick up there, but he never saw me. I was going to actually try to sneak around a little bit before I pulled him out, but that brings me to the first series of spawns. Let's take a look at the enemy spawns first. As you can see on the graphical overlay here, the enemy team's main spawn is going to be on the sniper house. This sniper house is the main spawn point on the map, and you can spawn in a couple different areas on it. There's a little stairwell with a, stairwell with a half wall that a lot of people spawn behind. And sometimes you can generally just spawn right underneath the balcony there. Um, the second spawn here is going to be on Fountain. And this is a pretty big spawn area, but uh, normally there's someone in this area. And you should definitely have someone set up in this area when you're pulling the flag because you do not want the enemy team to spawn here. Now there is a third spawn on this side. This happens when someone is on, on the Fountain and is pushing into that snipe spawn. If you're looking directly into the spawn, um, or if you have someone even in the back of their spawn in, in, in a couple of those buildings behind their flag, it will push the spawn to back yellow. That is the worst possible scenario for your team if you're pulling the flag. Back yellow spawn gives them a free roam path all the way to your flag with only really one cutoff point, in, which is in the bar. So you want to try to avoid that at all costs possible. So as you can see, our main spawn point is, if you remember from the last video, is going to be on pots, hedge, whatever you want to call it, garage, and bottom red. Our secondary spawn is over in the bar, and it pushes through the zigzag alley. Now, you need to remember again, if you spawn fountain, there's a good reason why. Usually that means someone's looking in your direction, or someone's in your spawn. So you need to know, hey, I spawned fountain, there's probably a guy near my flag, and I need to be ready to defend it. So let's uh, move on here and take a look at what our team does at this point. So as you can see, I continue to move through Fountain as my team rotates up. We have two guys, three guys on here. We got one on Yellow Dumpster, one sitting in Fountain, and uh, the last guy up here is trying to wait and defend his flag. I'm able to pick him off, but I uh, get killed going through the doorway there. Uh, I'm going to blame that one on connection because I think I felt like I was all the way through the door there, and he just curved his bullets around there and was able to take me out. But uh, they're able to defend their flag, get a couple kills, and they're going to push towards our flag, at which point I'm going to come through the bar area here, and I see my teammate get picked off. He makes a call out, and I'm able to pick up the flag, the guy running for our flag. So our team's going to continue to push through the red side at this point and force, try to force their spawn out to the sniper spot, sniper perch. We want to keep them spawned over there. And here's a good point that I want to point out here. We have three guys over on red. I see my teammate getting taken out. Instead of chasing that guy and going for the kill, I let him go, make the call, let my other teammate pick him up, and don't get caught chasing kills. So uh, I think it was Dovic was able to pick him up, take him down, and uh, you know we're set up here on spawn again. Once on fountain, I'm sorry. Once I get the fountain set up, I'm going to push through. 
Um, I get almost get taken out here. Me and Lloyd have a jump shot battle, and thankfully I win. Get a nice hip fire spray on him here, and he makes a call out, but I'm able to get the second kill there. So we have two down. If you get a kill near that flag, what you normally want to do is pull that flag. So let's take a look at where I'm going to go once I pull this flag. When I pull this flag, our main route is going to be through the lobby, through bottom red, back towards our main spawn, and into our flag area. Reason for this, you guys know why, you want to run towards your main spawn. We talked about this on in the first episode. Running towards your main spawn has multiple benefits. First of all, it's going to be generally completely opposite as the enemy team's main spawn. As you can see on the graphics here, their main spawn, like we pointed out earlier, is on the sniper hut. So that gives them a fur the furthest path of resistance to get to our flag. We want them to have to travel the entire length of the map. We don't want to push their spawns up any closer to our flag, and we want to keep our spawn in a position to where we can get guys off of respawn to set up and catch any cutoffs for our flag carrier. Our secondary spawn, like I said, is in the bar and in the zigzag alley. So these popular places are where you would like to set up. You want to keep one guy on fountain. That is a must play situation there when you pull the flag. You want to have a guy on fountain so they don't spawn there. You don't want them spawning there because you don't want to pull the flag and run right into the enemy team. A second popular setup spot is on yellow dumpster. Now this guy can also be in top red, but if he's in yellow dumpster, it provides a little bit more resistance for the enemy team. Back red allows them to get a little bit further out of their spawn than you'd normally like. So yellow dumpster is a pretty good spot. That guy has to play a pretty smart play though. He can't just sit there and look into that spawn or it's going to force it to back yellow. That guy really needs to play a bounce up and down type position where he's going to hide from the spawn, poke his head up and look at it again. Bounce, hide from it, bounce up and look at it again. He doesn't want to constantly stare at it because it will force it elsewhere. Another popular spot is back yellow. Back yellow on the trash cans can pick up anybody coming around revolutionary wall trying to run bottom yellow or anybody trying to go through mid street. This, uh, you normally won't have anybody set up here, but it is a good place to be. Um, normally when you're pulling the flag, you're going to be pushing red side and the guy on back yellow really can't stay along there that, stay, can't stay alive there that long. So the two secondary sort of positions you can run is top yellow as a counter to that back yellow spot there. Um, that guy can look down the street, pick up anybody there, but he is vulnerable to someone sneaking around rev wall on him and coming through bottom yellow. The other spot here is an important spot on the bar. The bar area is a key cutoff point, especially for your team coming off the main respawn. If you have a guy down while you're pulling, you want that guy to immediately move to the bar and set up for that cutoff. That's a popular route for the enemy to come from. So let's take a look at their options here. The enemy team has three options. They can run around the rev wall like I pointed out before. They can come mid-street through the jeep, or they can chase down through the lobby and run straight after your flag carrier. At this setup right here, you have cutoffs at each pivotal point in the map, and you're able to secure the flag run. So let's see how our team is able to handle the flag pull. As you can see, I pull the flag, and I'm stunned immediately, and a nade comes behind me, but I'm able to get out of there. I call out to my teammate, QP, push up, push up, push up, because I'm stunned. He makes a great play and pushes up there to protect me, because if I, he didn't want me to get shot in the back as I was stunned there. If I would not have been stunned, he would have been fine sitting on fountain and waiting. But as you can see, I get stunned, he moves up, makes sure he has my back, and I'm able to run the flag home scot-free. I had no resistance on that flag run whatsoever. I was able to run without getting stunned, without getting shot at, or anything. So I'm getting a little anxious here, and I make a little bit of a bad play. I didn't pick that guy up, running, sprinting a little too much, but I was trying to be aggressive. I wasn't expecting a guy to be able to get to bottom red from that area. We are able to pick two guys up here, and again, I'm going to push back through red. Um, I'm really focusing on being aggressive in this map, so uh, I'm going to keep pushing this way. And again, I'm going to hold down fountain. Now I hear a guy firing shots over there. My teammate calls out that he picks him up. And again, I'm going to keep pushing this fountain area. I probably got a little too anxious here because we had nobody trailing me behind on fountain. But I'm going to come up and try to pick up anybody off respawn. As I pick up off respawn, I get a kill right there. That's something that we've been practicing as a team. Once you get that kill on the flag... You should pull the flag, be aggressive, force the enemy team to have to defend and come after you and get that flag. And right here, they make a good play, they get me stunned. I was a little unsure if this was a team or not, and uh, I get shot from behind either way. It was QP that was on my team, thankfully he was able to get the kill, but we, they did return our flag. And that return didn't go as well as we had liked, we got guys picked off. Um, right towards the beginning of the flag pull, but you know, like I said, we only have one guy down right there as we 
as we uh, took the shot or took the took a chance at taking the flag and here again pushing through red Lloyd's getting smart picks me up coming through the lobby and uh, his defense is flag well so we have two down and they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna pull chart start to pull our flag but what we want to do is continue to push through this red side um, we do have somebody over here on fountain they're trying to nade him off and at this point uh, I know people are gonna be coming this way after him I should have pushed up here a little bit quicker but I get a call out that the guy from top yellow gets taken down. I get two guys in my sights, and that never works out for me. I should not have challenged. I shouldn't have uh, jumped out there and tried to get the TP. Should have stayed back and played that a little smarter, but uh, what can you do? Everybody makes mistakes, right? So, again, as you can see, I'm going to constantly push this red side. Push the red, push the red, push the red. And uh, they actually do get our flag here. I get shot at from behind. I make the smart play, but I just went prone a little too slow. And uh, he was there before I was expecting him, and he gets gets a nice kill there. Clouds makes a good play. So we do actually uh, get all four of our guys up here. You know, we're stunning the flag. We get we get the uh, nade on it, and we actually get the kill. As you can see right here, we get the return. I'm stuck throwing a nade. i got to get rid of that really quickly. And I'm going to come through and try to get the cutoff here. Um, I get picked up from yellow. We didn't really have a setup that was more of a counter-aggressive pull there after they took our flag. Um, we got a couple guys down trying to defend, and we tried to pull. But we do come away with the victory. We have one really almost perfect flag return there. Our flag runner, me, I get all the way through without getting touched. Stunned right a little bit off the bat, but I'm able to uh, get through there. So, hope you guys enjoyed Episode 3. I know you guys left a lot of good feedback for us, and we really appreciate it. Um, we're going to be moving on to some other maps now. I'm going to focus on Hanoi CTF next. That one seems to be uh, requested quite a bit, and I actually want to do that one because it's one of the maps that I also struggle on. Um, you know, CTF is an interesting game, and uh, I really enjoy playing it. I think Lloyd's going to be focusing on Villa Domination next for you guys. So uh, we may post some team scrims in the meantime while we work on the other videos because they do take a while to produce um, they're probably about an eight to ten hour um, work for us to get those videos up to get these types of videos up because we have to make the graphics and do all the editing but uh, you know it's really been a learning experience for us and hopefully you guys are are taking something away from it so um, we'll be posting some team scrims in the meantime probably with some commentary maybe with some live call outs and if you guys want to get into some team scrims with us, because we do have a team now, if you want to get some team scrims with us, hit us up on Twitter. The links are in the description. I will be posting stuff often, so follow me, I underscore am underscore the dentist. Follow me on Twitter if you guys want to get into some team scrims with us. We, uh, we've we been scrimming pretty much every night of the week for a couple hours each night, so uh, hit me up on Twitter if you guys want to get in. Thanks for watching, and rate the video. Let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to you guys on the next one.